Good evening, doctors. Uh, I once again thank the IMA CME coordinators for giving me an opportunity to talk about bedside psychiatry part two. I wish to recall that I gave a talk on bedside psychiatry one about two months back, and I said it is something like Bhagavali one and Bhagavali two. I never thought that I'll get an opportunity to present in Bhagavali two. I sincerely thank all the members for giving me an opportunity. Now, the World Health Mental Health Day 2018, October 10th was celebrated. On that month only I presented. But every year we have a theme that is young people and mental health in a changing world is the current year's theme. Half of all mental illness begins by the age of 14. In terms of the burden of the disease among adolescents, depression is the third leading cause. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among 15 to 29 years old. Harmful use of alcohol and illicit drugs among adolescents is a major issue in many countries and can lead to risky behaviors such as unsafe sex or dangerous driving. In part one, I told about two major illnesses Schizophrenia, which is primarily a disorder of thought. And we have we are proud that we have an organization called Schizophrenia Research Foundation, which is in Ananagar, doing excellent work. And every two years they conduct international conference, which has been accepted by the World Health Organization, started by Dr. Sarada Menon, currently run by Dr. Tara Sinivasan, who is the director of the Institute SCARF. The next about depression, I'm proud to say that one of our members, Dr. Lakshmi Vijay Kumar, is the founder of SNEGA, which is the suicide prevention center in the city. And also it has started all over India, suicide prevention centers, and they are doing excellent work. So these two diseases I covered in the first part. Now the second part is bipolar mood disorder. As you see, very common. It's day by day increasing. You see, it's more than 10 million cases in India, or, or approximately, almost <coughs> 1 in 100. Now, suicide and substance abuse are highly prevalent in bipolar mood disorder. And it's very strange. Many of them are under the mistaken impression that all psychiatric patients are mad. It's also common among even medical professionals. But most of the creative people like singers, painters, and stage artists suffer from this illness. Only actress is Deepika Padukone, who suffered from depression, openly admitted in the public that I have undergone depression because of relationship failure, and she was rehabilitated by a psychiatrist. She openly admitted in the press. It came in the social media. It requires a lot of guts. It opened an awareness among the common public even celebrities can go through depression. The second one is Priyanka Chopra. She openly said, I am having bipolar mood disorder. Now, if you, when I was a student, I used to visit Institute of Mental Health in those days in 1972, where Tirichi Loganathan, one of the exterior singers, if you have seen Vavu Chidambaram Pillai, that is Endrutanim in the Sudandira Dagam, Pannir Vittom, Valartom, Sarvesa. These are all the two wonderful songs sung by Trichy Loganathan. Every six months, he will be hospitalized in the Institute of Mental Health with maniac excitement. When he becomes maniacally excited, he will be very uncontrollable, very violent. So he will be hospitalized in the Institute of Mental Health. And when we go for the rounds, our professors used to say, they will not have Trichy Loganathan. Is a famous singer. Then he will ask, the professor will ask, Loganathan, or part of it? Immediately. No, just like that. He will start singing, Vande Madram, Endrutanim, in the Sudhantra with the same clarity, without any recording. Absolutely spellbound. All the students will be spellbound. So, bipolar mode disorder is very, very common among our practice. In a busy OP day, in a psychiatric OP in voluntary health service or public health center, we used to say 40, 50. Now in a mundane OP, every time you see a schizophrenia or a depression, it will be boring. But 
we would love to have a bipolar disorder patient for a change. Because the whole hope will be lively, this fellow will be continuously talking. It's called pressure of speech. He will shift from one topic to another topic as if he's going on a overdrive in a highway. And it will be meaningful. It is not incoherent talk like a schizophrenia. And he will have flight of ideas. He will have grandiose thinking. We used to have some of the patients saying that, I am Narendra Modi. I am Rajiv Gandhi. No, like that. And also sometimes he will say, I am Rajinikant. And he will dress like Rajinikant and come and have all his mannerisms. And they will have spending sprees. I remember one case about 10, 15 years back when the credit card was introduced. A patient has ordered for a premier NE Fiat car from a West Mangalam lane, literally lane. The NE cannot go inside the lane. He has ordered it because in those days credit cards easy. Buy a car, you can just apply the credit card, he has booked the car. When the car was delivered, was about to be delivered, the, pay, the people cannot negotiate inside the lane. So they parked the car outside the big road and came and inquired, so, so and so is ordered for premier any. And his father said, who? He said, your son is ordered. He said, he is mentally ill. <laughs> Generally that car for us said, oh God, this fellow is ordered because he was having grandiose thinking that he can afford to have a car. Now this particular illness, during the hypomanic phase, it thrills the patients. That's what we say. It thrills. He's very jolly, jovial, talkative. He has got a lot of flight of ideas, grandiose thinking. He's, he's the happiest person on the earth. But for his family members, it's a big nuisance. It's a very big nuisance because he will swipe the card, he will make irrational investments, he will become a banker. Now when he goes into depressive phase, the entire thing will change. Totally he will come into the shell, he will not talk to anybody, he will be crying, he will attempt suicide. So this is a spectrum. So one time he will be, six months he will be like that, up, down, up, down. Now sometimes some people have a fixed pattern. Now I have seen, from October onwards, I see a lot of patients becoming high. They are in hypomanic mood. Whereas in abroad, during winter, that is called seasonal affective disorder, where the winter is minus 40. You go to Canada, or even now people who are in US, like Indra Magalini's son and other people who are having children in US, they have extremely freezing cold. They cannot go out. They'll be confined only to the house with the heater, jacket, everything. So at that time, these people go through a depressive phase, which is called seasonal affective disorder. It's extremely a difficult condition to treat because one time you make him calm, he'll go into depression. When you start lifting his mood, he'll go into hypomania. So it's extremely a difficult disease to manage. But the recent advent of drugs, we are able to reasonably manage him very well. Now, the drugs have come into the market are mood stabilizers like sodium valparate, lithium, atypical antipsychotics like olanzapine, respiridone, aripiprazole. Last but not the least, once again I want to emphasize the fact electroconvulsive therapy is definitely useful in an acutely maniac excited patient. It is the drug of, I mean, this is the mode of choice where you can really calm him down. Otherwise, it will be very violent, unmanageable. So, many patients used to come and ask me how long I should continue the treatment. This is the biggest question every psychiatric patient will ask. How long? The late Matru Kodan, when he was ill, the famous psychiatrist was suffering from renal failure. The patients used to ask him how long I should continue. You have, if you are asking my lifetime, it is one and a half years. If it is for you, it's lifelong. <laughs> so the message is, <coughs> invariably, if the patient has relapsed remission, relapsed remission, the treatment is lifelong. Now, the question, other thing is asked, can he manage his life with this debilitating illness? The answer is yes. If 
the family members and the patient is cooperative. That is why I have given a booklet because I am very passionate about this illness. People who are interested in reading, you read a book called Unquiet Mind, written by Rayfield Jamison, who had a bipolar mood disorder when she was an MBBS student. Then she suffered. She attempted suicide thrice. Then she was started on lithium. She used to stop lithium. She goes into depression, attempts suicide, again revived. Now she is the now research head of bipolar mood disorder in US. She is a living example. She has written three or four books. One of the famous books is called The Biography of Rayfield Jamison is Unquiet Mind. So this is about bipolar mood disorder. The next is anxiety disorders. Play the video. Have to click. This community prevalence rate is the same. I was very anxious when I spoke to the audiovisual person. When I played this video, it didn't open. <coughs>
Now the diagnosis has gone into his mind so deep that he was shattered, completely shattered. Right? He was an athlete, used to go for hiking, used to do a lot of outdoor activities. He got completely panicked. And then he came here, underwent a, another colonoscopy with uh, our eminent professor, Dr. Pairali Sami. They took five places uh, biopsy. Yesterday the report came as ulcerative colitis. Now the disease is under remission. The uh, professor Pairali Sami said, eliminate the stress. It's a lifelong disease, but you have to manage the uh, stress. For that, when he came to me, and when we had a session for one and a half hours, the disease was not in his colon, but the disease was in the mind. The diagnosis was bugging him so much, you know. He was a passionate uh, lover of a football player, Fletcher. He read so much about uh, uh, ulcerative colitis, Googled, again, another problem with modern day patients, extensively googled about ulcerative colitis and he also found that his favorite hero football player Fletcher went through ulcerative colitis. He had a partial hemicolectomy or something like that, he underwent a surgery and all. Everything has been stored in his mind. When he said we had a session, he was constantly telling only about the stresses which is causing him the symptoms of the colon. We had a beautiful psychotherapy session with a psychotherapist. At the end of the day, at the end of the session, it was much relief. So we have not asked the drugs prescribed by the gastroenterologist to stop. At least, he also read in the extensive googling. The support group was told the longest remission was 20 years. A patient has been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. He has read in the Google that he had 20 years of remission also. So how anxiety uh, spoils many of the illnesses. We know white coat hypertension. When we go and record the blood pressure, some of the people, the blood pressure goes to 150, 120, and we start prescribing anti-hypertensive drugs. The evening when the nurse comes and takes, it's almost normal. So these are all symptoms of anxiety. Another anxiety disorder we commonly come across many of the patients is obsessive compulsive disorders. Many of them are, some of the doctors are very perfectionist, you know. They have to be punctual, they have to keep the pen in this order. If it is turned this way, he becomes worked up, you know. For you, it's okay. You can be a perfectionist. But if you work in an organization or in a hospital, the subordinates will find it difficult. There's a lot of people, I have a patient who comes repeatedly checking, you know. A number of times pulling the lock, a number of times cleaning, all this obsessive compulsive neurosis is extremely again difficult to treat, but we have a lot of drugs and cognitive behavior therapy. Now a lot of drugs have come into the market with anxiety. Now anxiety also after some time is always associated with depression. That you have to understand. It's something like diabetes with tuberculosis. So we do give anxiolytics and antidepressants. One of the commonest drugs we use is escitalopram. A word of common a caution among the doctors, please, for heaven's sake, use it with extreme caution of this Zolpidem. I see many of the cardiologists and physicians themselves take Zolfresh. It is an ultra-short-acting benzodiazepine. It's called as an executive benzodiazepine. It acts only for four hours. At the end of four hours, you will be awake be awake as bright as you are in the morning. So you will always have the tendency to take one more. Slowly over a period of time tolerance develops and you will end up in addiction. Similar thing is psychiatrists do not use Zolfresh. Psychiatrists do not use Alprazolam, one of the deadliest drug. The deadliest drug is Alprazolam or Restin. You know? Many of the housegoing, I mean housewives and people who are working in an organization, they always carry a, I mean, their handbags, a, a strip of rest, a strip of alprazola. Whenever I'm working, if I have stress, I'll pop up. Again, it develops tolerance, it creates a lot of dependence, extremely difficult to treat. These two drugs, addiction. I had an officer who was working in uh, secretariat as an undersecretary. He 
was taking three strips of Zol Fresh 10 milligram per session. We admitted in a public and said, he had an extremely tough time to withdraw from it. He used to run from all the floors. Worse than an alcohol patient, withdrawal symptoms. So be careful. So what drug you can safely use? The question usually asked is our conventional diazepam, which is still safe, but we don't use it. Garazepam, again, is a still useful drug. But monitor properly. Do not over the phone tell if the patient says, Dr. Tukavarla, rest till rendu put go. It's a commonest advice. You know, Zol Fresh, Anji Milligram, with Tukavarla, doctor, you would have undergone bypass surgery. And Patta put go. And you Patta put go, no, Pahinji put go. Put in the Solomon. So this is the problem. So this is anxiety disorders. We have a lot of behavior modification techniques, relaxation techniques to overcome anxiety disorder. The third important disease, I am not going to cover the entire gamut of psychiatry, it's very difficult. But substance abuse, the entire Tamil Nadu is run by Tasmak shop, the budget. You know alcohol is the commonest addiction. More and more, marijuana or ganja, it's very common among corporation school students. We conducted a lot of camps. We found corporation school students are addicted. I've been treating some of the college students of uh, very famous engineering colleges in Kelambakam. All of these college students are taking marijuana. They are under the mistaken uh, thinking that it's a performance enhancer. I'm sorry, it is not a performance enhancer. Though in Western countries, some of the European countries, it's legalized. You can use ganja, they don't ban it. But this is a very dangerous drug. It definitely takes away your performance. Most of the men who are addicted to ganja become important. It's a deadly drug. The latest drug which is coming to the recent addiction we have found in school students is called blue smelling. They use this pebicol or any whitener, put it in a plastic bag, shake it, and then inhale that fumes. That's called blue smelling. Now recently when you got a call from a corporation school administrators that we have got a lot of addiction among corporation school registers called Cool Lip. There is a substance called Cool Lip which is covered with a white cloth. They keep it under their gums. All the students in the corporation schools, most of them boys were addicted I believe. In a small way. They came and asked me to conduct an awareness program and the teacher went to the police department. The police department said, Madam, is a big mafia is behind. Don't involve yourself. Go to the dollar. You part of value part of it. Yeah, nowhere we should be create part of it. Where is that? Is that under that law and order? All of that. Which is not our own part of it. That's why we go there. That's called cool. That's that's very prevalent. That's this tobacco lobby is very very high. Now alcohol use disorders among adults are estimated to range from zero to sixteen percent. IS prevalent in East Eastern Europe. You know, sexual abuse, road traffic accident, domestic violence, suicide are commonly seen in people with substance abuse. Substance abuse, can it be treated? Yes, it can be treated. The success rate all over the world is only 35%. Unless otherwise the individual is motivated, you can never ever treat an addict. I have had a lot of professional doctors who have been addicted to various drugs. The last thing is, take home message, psychiatric illness is treatable. Suicide is preventable. Newer molecules in psychopharmacology has reduced the incidence of side effects to a great extent. Awareness among other medical professionals should be encouraged about mental illness and their outcome. This is what we are doing. We are doing more and more lectures to primary care physicians how they can start initiate the treatment of depression. Primary care physician can initiate the treatment and refer to a specialist if need be. I know many of the doctors have been using Prodap, many of the doctors using Sertralin. They can use, but how long? The rule of the thumb is, whenever you diagnose a case of depression or psychosis or bipolar, the treatment is, must be for six months. Do not abruptly stop the drug. Abrupt discontinuation of psychiatric medicines results in violent behavior and suicidal tendencies. More and more doctors are now taking up psychiatry as a specialty. When I was trained in psychiatry, people used to look at me, are you your psychiatry when ten years one of my now the current rate is 80 lakhs in the private medical college. 
I wish you all a very happy, healthy and peaceful new year. I have not mentioned prosperity. When you have all the three, prosperity will come to you automatically. So my youth, Professor Colin Srinivas and Gaida Collins used to say that no doctor starves and dies. So I wish you all a happy new year. Thank you. You have statistics of 0 to 16 percent bad indicators from the international uh, reference. Is it applicable to Tamil Nadu? I cannot say the exact percentage in Tamil Nadu, but Tamil Nadu after Chandigarh, I mean Punjab, Tamil Nadu is the second national level. Thank you. 